Well, howdy, friends. Thank you for joining me for episode number two. In the first episode, we discussed the tools that we needed to do emergency repairs. Very small list of tools that we needed to have. As you can see here, uh, the supplies, we have a lot more supplies. This side, I have two boxes um, that I'm working on putting together and I'll have them for sale on my website at some point. You'll know when that's going to happen. You'll notice that it's a woodwind box and a brass box. Um, and these are things that you can get from your technician in your area. Okay, so let's jump right on into this. And we're going to start with this woodwind box. Okay, and in our woodwind box, these are things that are prefabbed from that you can get from your repair technician. Now, some repair technicians won't sell any parts at all. They won't do it. Okay, some will sell a few parts. Some will sell whatever you want. Okay, that's just the way it goes, and it just seems to be dependent upon the repair technician. And most of the times, they don't want people to tear up their instruments, you know, uh, worse. What do you need to have for emergency repair? Well, an assortment of felts. These are just some flat round felts and some, and some taller bumper style felts for saxophones okay that's really all you need to have a little piece of cork is nice to have um, an assortment of the most popular pivot screws and flat springs in for your band, the instruments that are in your band, what are most of your kids playing? In my area, a lot of people, most everybody is playing a Yamaha or a LeBlanc product or an Accent product or um, something like that, Buffet. Okay, and so I know, and I pretty much know my regular guys. I know what they're using, so I keep a, a running tally. Um, and so it's just good to have some extra pivot screws and stuff around. Flat springs, I've got another trick for that. So you don't really have to have them. On saxophone pads, a small assortment, about five saxophone pads, that'll help you out. The most common that are going to be bad, that are going to rot out and are going to give your kids problems, are the, the neck octave, the palm keys, and this is the E flat. Now, if you tell your your technician, you, you say, I need some saxophone pads, you're gonna be met with, well, what size do you need? What kind, what resonator? Instead of the words, I don't know, say, use your best judgment, the five most popular sizes that you use. And we're gonna know. Not every instrument has the same sizes. For example, these may be an 18 and a half and your instrument might take an 18 and a half or it could possibly take an 18 or it could be a 19 and I'm speaking in millimeters. The Yamahas I think are like some, uh, they're 18.6 or 18 points. They're an oddball, right? But you can use a, a, a pad that is a little bit slightly undersized and make it work in an emergency. You're not trying to repad the instrument. So th these are things to keep in mind. The same with flutes. Some of the most common size flute pads and some shims. Really, that's all you need to worry with, okay? Same with clarinet. There are a multitude of thicknesses and firm, the cardboard back, the felt, single skin, double skin. There's a lot to ask for. But just some generalized, what's most common in your area? What's most common in your band? 
and that's going to help you out. That's going to help your technician in your area know what they're trying to put together for you. We always try to make a point to ask these questions. Let's jump into this brass box. The brass box, I've put several things in here. Um, just a basic polishing cloth so I can wipe the instrument down uh, and something that I know is, will always be clean. As far as oils, you'll see that I have four different things, five different things. And let's do this. This is a penetrating oil. Penetrating oil you use when the slides don't move, not at all. You can't get them to move. Put a little bit of penetrating oil on that. Next, this is a heavier viscosity tuning slide grease. Heavier viscosity. We'll discuss more of why we're using these things. This is a very thin viscosity valve oil. This is a trombone slide cream, which is a different viscosity than your tuning slide oil. And this, we, I use lanolin. I, I prefer lanolin to thick slide grease. So I use lanolin. It's also good for your hands. Some other things from your kit that you want to have is a length of French horn string. Enough five or six feet that gives you plenty to plenty to use on uh, you can do a set if you need that's more than enough to do four rotors uh, so that's important a variety of corks for trumpets and mellophones and then harmony instruments your baritones marching baritones um, tubas euphoniums a mixed set of corks and felts for those Um, a, a nice thing to have around are some water key springs. These are the most common for the instruments that I work on. And last in the brass box, just an assortment of some of the most used springs. And that's from trumpet all the way to, to tuba. Okay, so these are the things that you can get from your repair technician. Now I want to jump over here and, and let's get right into this. And, and what is all this crazy mess that I have out over here? Friends, I went and spent a few dollars and went crazy in the dollar store and found basically everything here. And I'm going to, not today, show you how to do it, but in coming videos, I'm going to show you how things that, some of these things you probably already have in your band room, and otherwise, a trip to the dollar store, and, and you're good to go, okay? And you're going to laugh at some of this stuff. You're going to think that I'm out of my mind. But I'm telling you, we can fix your horns um, properly, Without harm to the instrument, your child, your, your band kid will perform and won't have to worry about their instrument not performing for them. If they're at an audition, uh, not just for your band or competition for your, if they're at audition for honor band, right, in the whole room, that's when something always happens. We got you covered because this is the stuff that, we, that you can fix. Okay. I don't advocate rubber bands. So these are poly bands. These are the small size and you can find them in the hair section. These are elastic um, and they're cloth covered and they're small. And these are your normal hair bands that everybody has to Put your hair up in the shako, and so I know that you have these around your band hall. Band-aids. You've got band-aids around your band hall in, a, in your medical kit, in your first aid kit. 
make sure on any of this stuff you want no uh, you want latex free no latex latex reacts bad with brass lacquers and silvers it tarnishes them and actually can cause irreparable damage to that so you always want to get latex free the polys are a, like a silicone um, and then the these are of course cloth covered all right what else we've got here dental floss mincy goodness zip ties scotch tape pipe cleaners your choice of colors popsicle sticks both large and small this is teflon tape this is putty poster putty or silly putty but some kind of putty next cotton swabs toothpicks emery boards and fingernail polishing files self-stick felt pads so we have some moleskin and some bunion cushions whatever that that is um but moleskin for sure this is next care roll it's waterproofing and you probably have this in your medical blue painters tape Friends, I don't always advocate using tape on your instrument. I'm not a fan of duct tape. I'm not a fan of electrical tapes or anything like that. Tape is typically my last resort, although it does have exceptions on some things that we'll get into. This is just some assorted sandpapers. This is a very porous rag. Um, and it was called like a multi-purpose cleaning cloth bubbles i found a six pack or an eight pack of these tiny bubbles uh you know people getting married they blow bubbles at them nowadays uh this is nail polish remover you do want to have some acetone in it uh bread ties razor blades And don't let the gorilla name fool you. This is contact adhesive. So this is contact cement. Very light, very easy to remove contact cement. If you can't, I've seen it in Stanley brands. I've seen it uh, in several different things. We never want to use gorilla glues, super glues, no, no. Uh, we don't use any of that stuff. We don't use JB Weld. Um, we're not into any of that. Uh, contact cement. You're happy that it's over. But this is from the party section at the dollar store. And we don't really care about the whistly part. What we care about are these mylar strips. And I'll give you a little hint. One small popsicle stick and one piece of scotch tape and one piece of mylar taped on like that is going to make a wonderful feeler gauge wait and see I think next we're gonna start working on some stuff and start putting some of these things to use and get our hands dirty Okay, band directing is a, a hard job. You got you are in charge of a whole bunch of people, and how can how can we help you succeed and and get better, um, or just keep everything toeing the line, right? Let us know. Let me know. I'm very interested to help. Thank you very much for joining me. It's contest week around here. Um, so good luck to all my Mississippi bands. I look forward to seeing you at the state championships this weekend and friends from all other places. It is Bandtober, so I'm sure you're having contests there as well. Do your best. Break a leg, and I'll see you in episode three where we start working on stuff. 
Thanks, everybody. If you have anything that uh, you need to reach me about, I'm always available. My email is wlmrepair at gmail.com. Thanks, everybody.